mother! got to hand it to Capcom. They just trolled the whole gaming world. They just announced a brand new game that has dinosaurs in it, like Dino Crisis. It has a badass female character in it, like Dino Crisis. It even has the producer of Dino Crisis 2 and 3 involved. But is it a new Dino Crisis? Nope. Instead, it's some sort of Anthem-style shoot-'em-up game. <sighs> you bastards. So. The streak continues! It's now been 19 years since we've had a new Dino Crisis game. That's impressive. But despite the time gap, Dino Crisis still has a very strong fan following. Recently we put up a poll asking all of you what old Capcom franchise you would like to see make a comeback, and Dino Crisis was the overwhelming victor. I mean, Capcom, there's literally no excuse. You just made remakes of Resident Evil 2 and 3. The blueprint is right there. Just replace zombies with dinosaurs and there you go. As much as I've gone on about it, I have to admit I myself have not yet played any of the Dino Crisis games. The first title came out on the PlayStation 1 and even though that was the first system I bought with my own money, I did not have a lot of games for it. Other than Tomb Raider, sports titles, and Tales of Eternia, my PS1 library was pretty sparse. But fortunately for me, I did buy it for 5 bucks on the PlayStation 3 several years ago, and I decided, why not? Let's just give it a shot, see how it is. Now first, a history lesson. Capcom legend Shinji Mikami helped redefine survivor horror with the original Resident Evil in 1996. He continued his success with Resident Evil 2 in 98, and in 1999 he oversaw Resident Evil 3 Nemesis. But that was not all. He also unleashed his newest creation, Dino Crisis. With this game, Shinji served as both the producer and director, and he and his team wanted to take things in a new direction. Instead of survival horror, this game would introduce panic horror. This is because dinosaurs are faster and more intelligent than your run-of-the-mill zombies. However, Shinji and his team were not able to completely meet his vision, as he wanted the artificial intelligence of the dinosaurs to be able to adapt to the player's movements and set ambushes. But the technology was not quite there yet to fully realize what he wanted. But still, the game was a huge hit both commercially and critically. But again, it was the 90s. Has this game aged well, or is it just a relic of its time? Let's find out. Here's our review of Dino Crisis. When you start, you get a message that this game contains gore and violence. That's how you know it's going to be awesome. Our story takes place in the futuristic year of 2009! A special operations team lands on a strange island in order to find a scientist who was believed to be dead for three years. Our main character is Regina, who is essentially your typical 90s action heroine, with all the snark and sassiness you could ask for. That's disgusting. You're not gonna believe this. He was attacked by some kind of dinosaur. Oh, oh. Now that's a good one. So, who was it? Barney? This isn't a joke, you idiot. We were just attacked by a big ass lizard. Then you have Gale, our straight-laced, granite-chin field leader, who is all about completing the mission at all cost. And finally, we have Rick, a smart-tongued black computer expert. He actually is a pretty cool character, and his personality being just opposed to Gale adds some nice drama to the story. Oh, and there's also this guy named Cooper, but he didn't last very long. Coopers don't last long on islands filled with dinosaurs. <laughs> that was a Jurassic Park 3 reference. So. In that movie, the first guy that got killed is 
his name was also Cooper, so it's you know, just a funny coincidence. <laughs> I've seen a lot of movies. As soon as the team lands, the mission goes tits up as they discover researchers all over the place who've been torn into pieces. The culprits? Dinosaurs. And there are plenty of them. As things progress, Rick and Gale begin to butt heads and start going in different directions. This puts Regina smack in the middle, and there will be times throughout the story where you have to choose between their two plans. This allows the game to have multiple different endings. Now during this adventure, Regina will come face to face with Velociraptors, Pterodons, Compsignasis, Thenosauruses, and of course, the Tyrannosaurus Rex. I won't go much further into the story in order to avoid spoilers about why these prehistoric animals are roaming free here, so I'll just let you find that out for yourself. You saw that it was a real dinosaur. It's unbelievable. Didn't I tell you? This is just like that movie. Yeah, and I know exactly the movie he's talking about too. <laughs> Now the gameplay is modeled heavily after the classic Resident Evil games. Here you are traveling through the facility with fixed camera angles. This adds to the tension as you go down areas and you hear sounds but you can't see what's making the noise. At least not until you get close enough. Like Resident Evil, when you transition from one room to the other, you see animations of Regina opening doors, walking up and down stairs, and using zip lines. There is just something about these old PlayStation 1 games. I know the graphics nowadays are so impressive, but in this era, I always found it to be quite intense. I think it was due to the atmosphere. It was kind of a less is more concept. The music is used sparingly, so most of the time you either hear nothing or sounds of the environment. I really felt it here, and it reminded me of the time when I played Silent Hill. Hell, even the old Tomb Raider games had some of those sections. Another nice touch is that sometimes when you shoot a raptor, they can actually play dead and spring a trap on you. So make sure to fool them full of holes until they're lying in a puddle of blood, just to be sure. Now Regina does have weapons that she wields, from a handgun, shotgun, and grenade launcher. Throughout the game, you'll need to find ammos for them. You also need to find plugs to get access to emergency boxes where you can swap out your supplies. Regina has a fixed number of slots, so you'll have to pick and choose on what you can carry at a particular time. Another thing to look at is health supplies to replenish your energy. Another feature you'll have in this game is the mix option. Here you can combine materials to get more powerful items, like packs to replenish your health completely and ammo like poison darts. When Regina gets attacked and takes damage, you can see the effects on her, such as her bleeding, and you can see that in her footsteps. Also, you can see her limping and hunched over when she's badly hurt. Now, when it comes to offense, Regina has the ability to shoot while moving, which keeps you from being a totally stationary target. But as the game went on, ammo became scarce. I really started to feel the anxiety, especially when I came across dinosaurs who could tank many bullets. So I spent a lot of time running away, trying to stick and move, and use electric barriers to keep the dinos at bay. In some instances, a danger message will appear. This is when a surprise attack from a dinosaur happens, and you'll have to act fast in order to stay alive. This gets multiplied twofold when the T-Rex shows up. He pretty much functions as the Mr. X or nemesis of this game. My advice, fire as much as you can and move around the best you can, or else you'll get a not so nice ending. The controls in this game are of the tank variety, so Regina is very much on the grid. And I do admit it did take a little while to get used to it. At least you have a quick turn here, but still controls can give you a fair amount of headaches. Just to clarify, I do agree with William on this. These controls are not bad, they just take a little bit of getting used to. The second half of the game becomes very puzzle heavy, such as operating computer terminals, finding keys, and discards with input codes. You'll also have to acquire ID cards and find computers to override them to gain access to certain areas. This does mean you'll have to do quite a bit of backtracking in areas, which admittedly can get a little exhausting. Now like I said, there are several different endings to this game, some where certain individuals die and others survive, so this does give the game a good amount of replayability. Also, when you start a new game, you can get access to new costumes, such as this Lara Croft ensemble Regina is rocking right here. In the end, 
I really dig Dino Crisis. I wish I'd gotten into this game when it first came out. Kind of a story of my gaming life. It took me a while to get into Resident Evil, and I'm so glad I did, but Dino Crisis is Resident Evil crossed with Jurassic Park. This is right down my alley. As far as the panic horror aspect, it's definitely there. Creatures jumping out of nowhere, a big Rex hunkering down, and the constant fear of what lies ahead when I only have one bullet in my chamber. It really did a number on my nerves. It's a game that's not for everyone, but certainly is for the survival horror fan, and I'd like to thank Capcom for turning me into one. So there you have it, my thoughts on this little gem called Dino Crisis. I would like to try the sequel someday, because I don't know squat about them. The only other game I played with Regina is Namco Cross Capcom, so I would love to enjoy more of her adventures. And you know what, before I go, I want to send out a special challenge to my cousin William. Now, I just reviewed Dino Crisis, which is basically Resident Evil with dinosaurs. William, I challenge you to do a full review of this game, Onimusha Warlords, which is basically Resident Evil in feudal Japan. Come on, Will. I want to see you do it. The fans want to see you do it. And I know you want to do it. Make it happen. Anyway, I'm Eugene Morris of the Brotherhood of Gaming. Thank you for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And make sure to visit our Teespring store to check out our cool TBOG merch. We'll see you next time. And as always, remember, keep on gaming.